you know, we've been trained to run towards chaos. A lot of people have been trained to run away from chaos. So what areas of opportunity do you think will rise in 2024? What, what, what markets, what sectors? Uh, if somebody needs to be cross-trained to do something else uh, with technology and AI taken in, is there an opportunity there that you're, that you're excited about? Well, anytime you know, uh, uh, the temperature goes that high, uh, people are afraid. Anytime people are afraid, they're willing to listen more. Anytime people are arrogant and cocky, they're not willing to listen. When you call a mortgage broker who just made $180,000 last month, he's like, yeah, man, I got 10 minutes. What you got? You know the, But when you talk to that same mortgage broker that made $12,000 last month, it's like, hey, yeah, man, I, I'm sorry. Am I on time? I just came five minutes. On. Like, okay, so hey, what do we got? I hear you guys are, hey, how come you're listening now? You weren't listening 18 months ago. Mm -hmm. What happened there? Now you're listening. So the market's going to have a lot of people that are listening, which means show ratio of people wanting to meet with you is higher. Availability ratio, people saying, yes, I'm willing to meet is higher. Typically, you have to follow up with a person seven times, so you make an appointment with them. You're probably going to have to follow up two or three times. These are all good things for somebody that's in the sales business. You're going to be able to get ahead of it. If you're in the real estate and, and the mortgage business, I'm telling you what I hope happens because it's not good for the climate. I hope rates stay at 7 or 8% for throughout the entire time in 2024. Yeah. Do I think that's going to happen? I don't know. Why? Because I think... As it gets closer to August, after RNC and DNC, I think DNC is going to be in Chicago August 16. I think RNC is in July. And if the candidate on the left doesn't feel confident about what's going on, they're going to lobby for the Fed to make better decisions to help them with their election. So they need to decrease rates, lower rates, so economy kind of starts flowing again and moving yeah. again. So if somebody's going to lobby uh, to call uh, Powell and say, lower the rates, that may happen, so I don't know. I think rates may start decreasing June, July, August. I don't know by how much, but I hope it stays flat next year. I think it's gonna be a very big opportunity for individuals to rise up, show poise, show confidence, realize what you can control, what you can't control, speak openly with people. Like mm -hmm. In seasons like that, the way you sell is the following way. Look, I don't need to tell you if you're watching the news, you know what's going on. We have an election year, uncertain, it's crazy, it's chaotic, the economy is strange, it's bipolar right now. You know, boom, boom, boom. You're probably seeing it with your 401k, with your savings at your job. People are getting fired. They're keeping the jobs. They're doing this. They're doing that. However, this is the approach we're taking. We suggest X, Y, Z. And here's what's working for us. It's going to be a lot of matter of fact type of speaking with people because that's what they're going to want uh, next year. But again, going back to it, I think the, uh, the opportunity in times like that, you know, uh, when I'm talking to Brady a couple months ago at the vault, you're mm -hmm. there. I, I, over the last 20 years, this whole concept of business planning for the audacious few. Guy asked me a question, he says, so, you know, isn't it a little bit aggressive to say, choose your enemies wisely? You know, isn't that like a Sun Tzu type of thing? Or isn't that like a little bit too much power in the world and all yeah, art of war? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, even he probably said, choose your enemies wisely. Sure. I said, no, but here's the thing you gotta be thinking about. I said, what you gotta be thinking about right now is, you know, when I watch guys in the last 20 years I did business planning. I first had no clue how to do a business plan for you as my new sales guy or sales leader. It was just more like, you can do it. What are your dreams? You want a car? You want to travel? You want to retire your mom? Let's go. Here's your plan. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, uh, but he doesn't know what the hell he's doing. So what do we do now? Okay, no. All right, so now we got to be more uh, logical. What you need to do is you need to make this many calls and you need to run this many appointments. And you need to do this, this, then we got a little too logical. Emotions was bored, so they're okay. So what do I do? Well, we need emotion and logic. Okay, great. But emotional logic in what area? Then it's like, no, new building blocks. Then you need, no, 12 building blocks. Six emotion, six logic. Interesting. Then based on that, I started seeing who moved better. I'm like, man, this guy has no clue what he's doing. But man, he wants to win for his mom so bad that he's crying. Okay. This guy knows exactly what he's doing. He's my best sales guy but he's got no dreams and ambitions. He's happy ambitions. He's happy making three, four grand a month. And no matter how I challenge him, nothing drives him. So, so, so then you start sizing people up, okay? You start sizing people up. With Brady and some of these guys that went and competed at the highest level, you'll find three commonalities. These are guys that experienced unconditional love one time in their lives, okay? Where for you, it's your mom. Mm -hmm. You can't do anything wrong in your mom's eyes. <laughs> Nothing, right? You get arrested, you come to your mom, your mom's going to be like, you okay? Everything good? Everything good? You're like, how could somebody love me this much that I just screwed up? Yeah. And you still love me? Yeah. Wow, yeah. right? We need to experience that. Mm -hmm. Only one time is all you need. 
Because when you experience it one time, you know what it tells you? It's possible and it's out there. One time. Two, then you have somebody that you look at in your lifetime that no matter how much you try to earn this person's love, you could never do it. You make a million dollars, they don't care. You get a six pack, she's still with another guy. You drive a Lambo, she doesn't give a shit. You buy a 20,000 square foot house, doesn't do anything. No matter what you ever do, this person you loved so much betrayed you, left you, broke you for the rest of your life. You are never gonna win this person's confirmation. So you have unconditional love, unconditional, un unbelievable pain. Then you have the last one, is when you end up choosing the right person or enemy that drives you. Most people that last element met, they don't choose the right one. Like I remember one time you and I, I like I can recite five of your enemies. I won't do it on the <laughs> camera, but I can recite five of your enemies. I remember one time we we're talking on the phone, the first yeah. 90 days you were with us. Yeah. And it's me, you and Sheena, this name would keep coming up, keep, keep coming up, coming up, coming up. I'm like, perfect, that's an enemy. And then another person was in your life that was making your life very difficult, another enemy. And then there was another person that really did something to Sheena, another enemy. And then I sat there and I talked to you guys about it. I think you remember this call that we had together where I'm like, guys, here's what you have to realize. Totally get it. He made this much money, here's what you gotta do. That person's doing this, go light it up so you don't have to worry about it. This person's doing that, here, and, and, I saw, and I'm looking at you, I'm looking at your eyes and I'm looking at her eyes, I'm like, these guys are gonna get whatever they want. Why? Because you guys have the right enemies. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you wanna see the full podcast, Click right here.